All right, here's your legal warning. I am not responsible for what you do to your truck by watching my videos. If you follow my videos, your truck's likely to start blowing bubbles out the tailpipe. So, all right, as you can see, we have the block back from the machine shop. Um, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is, um, I hooked up my air compressor with my little uh, um, air tool here. And I am blowing out all of the uh, bolt holes for liquids and stuff like that. Um, and or uh, possible dirt or metal shavings or anything from the work that they did. <clears throat> so after, I've already blown everything out. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to show you how to do that. Um, but uh, I've got rubbing alcohol and I've got some uh, lint-free towels. So what I'm going to be doing now is taking the alcohol, cleaning the mating surface for the girdle and uh, the block and the, uh, the bearing journals here. I'm going to clean those and then we're going to get the bearings put in and um, I'll be right back. And all right, uh, since I'm doing this surface, we are obviously going to do it to the uh, journals on the girdle as well. I'm trying to get all the dirt out as possible. Um, and I'll be right back. Um, if you saw my video yesterday, I'll put a link to it above. Um, but I was at the machine shop and I found a poster chart with uh, different bearing failures and what caused it. And uh, I didn't know this before, but as of learning yesterday, so the back sides of my bearings um, they looked worn and I, I didn't have any clue what the hell had happened to them and according to the chart that I saw at the machine shop, um, whoever put this together before me um, did not clean out these journals very well so there, uh, there was apparently dirt or something between the bearing and the block and that's what caused that, uh, that damage and let me grab one of those real quick and I'll show you. So this is obviously the back side of the bearing and uh, it had that wear on it and I had no clue how in the hell that happened but according to that chart uh, there was obviously some dirt between the block and the bearing and it caused that right there. Another thing that I've never really seen any, uh, anybody else talk about is these plugs here for uh, your cooling system. There's one on this side and there's one exactly on the other side right here as well as your... Uh, your block heater here. All three of those have O-rings on them. So if you've got an O-ring kit, you're already down this far, go ahead and take your Allen and your you know, Crescent wrench or whatever and get these off and replace those O-rings. So there is a difference between the upper and lower bearing. Okay, so the upper bearing is going to be the one with the holes in it here and it's going to press down into the block where the oil uh, feeds are. And the lower bearings are the ones that are smooth, and these actually press into the girdle. So if you were to turn the block over, this would be on the bottom, and this would be on the top, much like that. That makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna get some alcohol, I'm gonna clean the bearings, and, uh, and then I'm gonna get these pushed in. I'll be right back. Oh, another thing, um, real quick. Let me see if you can see that. Um, whenever I was taking my old bearings out, obviously this is a new bearing, but when I was taking my old bearings out, it looked exactly like this, so I was wondering myself if there was actually wear or not, but this is a brand new bearing and it looks exactly the same, so um, I'm not going to worry about that at all. Okay, so I did put the uh, upper bearings in. <clears throat> um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the oil, the piston oil squirters. Um, there's four on each side, so driver side and passenger side, right there. Um, one hole you can clearly see has threads in it, and the other one does not. So obviously the oil goes through the one that does not have threads, and the bolt goes in the threads. 
Um, that is, I believe, 10 foot-pounds with uh, blue Loctite on the threads of the bolt. So um, I've got my Loctite, and then I've got all of my oil squirters down in that box. They're all nice and cleaned. So uh, I'm gonna get those in there, and uh, I'll be right back. Right now, I'm just wiping down these mirror finishes just in case I touched it anywhere. Um, I don't want any dirt on these journals at all. So I'm just kind of trying to spin it here at the back end and then uh, wipe these down at every angle. And then I was also like grabbing my towel like this and doing like a simulated polish. Um, so I just used a cheap uh, four inch pulley puller to get um, this plate off of uh, the end of the crankshaft because I never took that off whenever I disassembled. Um, and uh, the old uh, rear main seal came off with it and you can see they put red Loctite on it. Um, so I need to buy some more red Loctite for whenever I put this back on as well. Alright, so for the crankshaft bearing clearances, uh, millimeters here are going to be 0 0.020 millimeters to 0 0.086 millimeters um, for good bearing clearance for your crankshaft. Unfortunately though, uh, unfortunately though, the plasti gauge that I bought does not uh, have a wide enough range to plasti gauge this. I can still plasti gauge it and it has a shorter, narrower range that is within the tolerances. Um, but if it's slightly out of that tolerance, I'm not going to be able to measure it. So, uh, the big end of the girdle goes on the back of the block. And we're going to see if we can stick this on here. All nice and gently like. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody mention this or not, but, uh, the inside one is longer. So longer on the inside towards the crankshaft on so it's the same for that side too all right so i'm going to use my drill to run these down and then i'm going to start the torque sequence i'll probably put uh some kind of paper on the screen where you can see the torque sequence and uh i'll be back i'm gonna go by navistar's uh torque uh specs which are 110, 130, 
on that one as well. So I think that we're completely in spec. I'm gonna wipe the plastic gauge off. I'm gonna pull the crank back off. And then I'm gonna set the, uh, set the engine upright to make it easier to put the camshaft in. Um, and once I get the engine down, I'll be right back. 